Okay, welcome to this video where we're going to be having a look at a difficult version of area of a sector and we're not going to be using a calculator. So if you want, pause the video, have a go at this question, but otherwise stick with me and let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's read this question. So it says the diagram shows two shaded shapes A and B. Shape A is formed by removing a sector of a circle with radius 3x minus 1 from a center of the circle with radius 5x minus 1, or sector of the circle. So we can see there that we have that shaded shape A, and you can see that it is a sector of a circle. We can see that it has a 45 degree angle, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And in order to get shape A, we've removed that smaller circle on the inside or that smaller sector. It says shape B is a circle of diameter 2 minus 2x. So we can see that as well. We can see shape B. It says the area of shape A is equal to the area of shape B. Find the value of x. And you must show all your working. So to start with, we need to find the area of one of these shapes. So we could go about finding the area of shape A to start with. And we can do that by thinking about the area of a sector. So to get the area of a sector, we do pi r squared, so we can write this down over here. So for the area of a sector, we're going to do pi r squared, and we multiply that by the angle over 360. So sometimes that's written as theta over 360, so I'll write that as theta, if I can write, I'll write that in small enough up here, over 360. So the angle that we have in this question, which we could talk about straight away, is 45. So 45 out of 360 as a fraction can be simplified. So however you want to simplify that down, uh, we could divide the top and bottom by 15 maybe, or by five, but the top and bottom actually divide by 45. Obviously you can take slower steps to simplify this, but if we divide the top and bottom by 45, it becomes one over eight. So we are looking at one eighth of a circle. And we're gonna incorporate that when we find the area. So if we plug the values in that we have, and bearing in mind, when we're finding a shaded section, we're going to want to find the area of the larger section and then take away the area of the smaller section. So we have, for the larger circle, we've got pi multiplied by the radius squared. I'm going to put it in a bracket because the radius of the large part of the sector is 5x minus 1, which it does tell us in the question, but of course you could get that by adding together 3x minus 1 and 2x. And that's the radius, so we're going to square that and we'll think about this multiplying by the angle in just a second, but let's just think about the actual full area of the circle here if it wasn't a sector. And to get the unshaded part, so we're going to take away the unshaded part, and that would be pi times the radius of the unshaded part, which is 3x minus 1. So multiplied by 3x minus 1, that's the radius, so that is squared. So we need to go about working that out. So if we work this out to start with, then we'll think about incorporating that one eighth at the end once we've got the area of the unshaded part, if it was a full circle. So if we expand these brackets, so we have a double bracket, so we have, and we're gonna have pi at the start still. And if we expand that double bracket there, and you can either write that out completely if you want, I'm gonna expand it from here. So we have a five x times a five x, 25 x squared. If it was a double bracket, we've got five x times negative one, and we have that twice, so that's gonna be negative five x and another negative five x, so that's negative 10 x. Again, if you prefer, write out the double bracket and expand it slowly. Then you've got negative one times negative one, which would be plus one, and that's that double bracket expanded. Then we're gonna take away the other one, so pi lots of this double bracket expanded, three x times three x would be nine x squared. We'd have negative three x twice, so negative six x, and negative one times negative one would be plus one. And there we go, there's our brackets expanded. So that right there, we're gonna subtract them away from one another. So we'd have pi lots of, and we've got 25x squared take away 9x squared, and that would be 16x squared. Negative 10x take away negative 6x, so as we're taking away negative 6x, that would add 6x. So that would be negative 4x. And then we have 1 take away 1, so that's going to disappear. So we just have pi lots of 16x squared take away 4x. 
Okay, so that, when we multiply it by 1 8th, is going to be equal to the area of the other circle. So we can bring in that eighth now if we want. So 1 8th of that, or 1 8th pi, multiplied by that, is going to equal the area of the other circle. So let's work out the area of the other circle. Now we've got to be careful on this one because it gives us the diameter. So if we want the radius, which we're going to write down, so just the radius here, this radius distance, would be half of 2 minus 2x. That's going to be 1 minus 1x. So to work out the area of that circle, we would do pi lots of, and we could write this out either down below. Actually, I'm going to work it out just here. So we've got pi lots of 1 minus x squared, so pi r squared. So there we go. So that's going to be equal to that when we expand it. So if we write this down, we've got pi lots of, if we expand that bracket, 1 times 1 is 1. So we'd have 1 minus x and another minus x would be minus 2x. And then negative x squared times negative x squared would be, sorry, negative x times negative x would be positive x squared. And there we go. That is the expression there for the area of circle B. So we've got an equation to solve. So how are we going to solve this equation? Well, what we can do is we can divide both sides by pi. So if we divide both sides by pi, that would just get rid of those pi symbols. Now, instead of writing it all out, in fact, let's go for a different colour. I'm just going to cross those pi's out. So we've divided both sides by pi, and now they're gone. Now, let's think about what we can do here. So how are we going to get rid of this 8? So what we could do is we could times both sides by 8. And if we times both sides by 8, that will remove the fact of doing the 8. And instead of then having to divide things by an 8, we can actually just times by 8, and that's going to remove it from the left-hand side. So we'd have 16x squared minus 4x. We can get rid of the bracket now because we've got nothing on the outside. And we're going to multiply the right-hand side by 8. So that would be 8 minus 2x would become 16x. And x squared is going to become 8x squared. Okay, so we've got an equation now. It doesn't look too bad. We've got rid of pi. We've got rid of that 1 8. Now we just need to solve it. So we have a quadratic equation. We're going to want to make that equal 0. So I'm going to get rid of some of this working out so that we can focus a little bit more on the equation that we have to solve right now. Obviously, you don't want to rub out your working out when you're doing these in an exam. But as we've got a limited space on the screen, we're going to get rid of all of that. OK, so this is where we're at. 16x squared minus the 4x equals 8 minus 16x plus x 8x squared. So to solve this, we want to get everything, and let's move it to the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract this 8x squared from both sides. So 16x squared would become 8x squared. And you can write that down if you want. I could write that over here, what I've done. I've subtracted 8x squared from both sides. I'm also going to want to add 16x to both sides, and I'm going to want to subtract this 8. So if I do that, Add 16x to the negative 4x, that becomes positive 12x. And then minus the 8 would just be minus 8. And that all equals 0. So now I'm in a position where I can actually solve this equation. So we're solving a quadratic equation. So if I can, I want to simplify this. And looking at that quadratic equation, I can divide all of those pieces there by 4. So I'm going to divide everything by 4. So we get 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Now I need to factorise this to solve it. So if we put this into double brackets, we're going to have to have a 2x there and an x in the other bracket. That will allow us to have 2x squared. That's all equal to 0. And our factors are going to have to be 1 and 2 because we've got a negative 2 at the end. So if I want to make plus 3, bearing in mind that the number in the right bracket is going to double, if I put the 2 in that bracket, that would make it 4 and then a 1 in this bracket. So I can make 3 using 4 and 1. So I want plus 4, so plus 2, take away 1. That's going to get me to 3, so that's going to expand to make plus 4x minus 1x, and we get the minus 2 at the end. So there are two solutions in those brackets. So this is solving a quadratic by factorising using a non-calculator method. So for the first bracket, that's going to be x is equal to positive 1, and because it's 2x, it's 1 over 2. And for the right-hand bracket, x is going to equal negative 2. So we get negative 2 as well. So we've got two answers, 
but this question says find the value of x, doesn't say find the values. So we just need to have a think about the question. Now in this part here, and this is probably the easiest part to look at, this length here is 2x. So that length could have a value of a half. 2 times a half would be 1, and that could have a length of 1. But if we put negative 2 in, that would give us a length of negative 4, and you can't have lengths that are negative. So there we go, our answer is 1 half, and we do not include the negative value because we can't have a negative length. So our final answer is x is equal to 1 half, and that is the final answer to this question. So if you want a more in-depth look looking at this topic, you want to go through some more practice questions, just understanding the basics behind this topic, I'll link the full video in the description, you can see it on the screen. And within that video, if you click into the description, just like this one, you'll see that all of the topics are listed there as well. So even if you're not sure on that topic and you figure out the bits that you're not sure on, they're all there, they're all linked to the description and they're all there for you to practice. So hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you for the next one.